This is Abe Freetanzer from Awards Watch, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Dan Ojari and Mikey Please, the filmmakers behind the Oscar-nominated animated short, Robin Robin. How are you both doing today? Oh, very Fabulous. well, thank you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thanks, Abe. Mind-blowing. What universe have we slipped into? It's bizarre, but amazing. No, it's great. So... I understand that you had the idea for this film, but where did the idea come from? Oh, the, the, well, um, the, actually, the short story is um, my wife suggested <laughs> a film about a robin, and um, me and Mikey had been thinking on ideas for uh, like a Christmas short because we we love the format, we love the um, the tradition of sitting down with your family and watching a animated short every year and we we grew up loving those films and um yeah we we're just thinking on them and um my wife suggested a, about a robin and me and mikey then uh we actually it was one evening me and mikey sort of sat down with a few few sort of scraps of an idea around this robin and christmas and and it came together really quickly just me and mikey sort of yeah uh <laughs> i don't know <laughs> messing around and, with and then we spent idea. And then we spent about four years trying to tell people the story that we had come up with this one night and everyone just walking away because we were like, yeah, it's going to get really good. <laughs> and um, it, it took about four years until we could get to the end of the story and people wouldn't walk away. And, and that's when we started um, pitching it. <laughs> so. And you did find a really great collaborator in Ardman, correct? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we we met Sarah Cox at the uh, Annecy Film Festival and and pitched it to her in the canteen, sung one of the songs amongst the sort of background hum of people eating lasagna. And um, and yeah, you know, we, we've been huge fans of, of Ardman and they're very much a big part of the reason, you know, we, we, we make stop motion films is because they inspired us as as kids. So it's uh, been incredible to become part of their their family there. And what would ended up being the most challenging part uh, animation wise in terms of the look you wanted to achieve? Um, hmm. Well, there was, it's probably the, the material that we use, needle felt, which has a lot of challenges intrinsically in it. It's, it's a beautiful material and it lights wonderfully. and has this sort of inherent charm to it, which we loved. And that's the reason why we picked it, but we didn't know how tricky it was going to be in that it's it's not very flexible as a material and with a stop motion puppet you want whatever you make the puppet out of to be able to flex around and move um which Neil felt isn't really like that and it also every time you touch it it kind of moves and it boils in a way that you can't control um so I think problem solving how we how we made our characters out of this which we and we wanted these very simple character designs they don't have clothes with lots of joints and things like that to hide the the seams um that was probably one the, the sort of biggest challenge but fortunately we were working with this incredible team at Ardman that um that somehow figured out how to create these puppets and these characters out of this material has working with models and created this animated story changed the way that you look at birds or mice in your real life now? <laughs> um, One thing I did actually do was whilst we were writing um, the, the film, it was actually during the first lockdown when we, we were sort of figuring out certain scenes and we were working quite a lot on the, the sneak scene. I had loads of mice coming into my house. I was trying to like keep them out and I, and I realized that I couldn't, I, I, like I'd had humane traps and things like that. And, but I was just like, I can't, I just felt so, I, I empathized so much with the family of mice that were stealing from my, from my house um, that I ended up just sort of like boarding up every single crack and hole in my house. So I wouldn't harm the mice in any way. I would just keep them out. <laughs> and I, from now on, I don't think I could ever lay a trap down or anything like that for mice. <laughs> What about you, Mikey? Well, I had a really serious <laughs> mice infestation um, quite recently, and in in a place we just moved out. Of, but it, I really felt like 
uh, doing a director's cut. I had probably the opposite feeling, Stan. I was like, I'm going to do, I put out this really positive piece of PR about mice, but they're ruining my life. And I, <laughs> I want to do a director's cut in which I really do an expose of just how dreadful they can be in, in your home. Sorry, Dan. I, I, um, I mean, I, I didn't, I, 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 ended up, you know, keep, I didn't, I didn't murder any, but I, I did end up keeping them out as well. But my goodness, they have not made my life over Christmas very happy. <laughs> So I know that there are some really nice interpretations of the meaning of the story and all that. Is there anything that you've heard from people who have seen it that has surprised you that you didn't intend or expect? Um, I don't know about, I mean, I think a lot of people seem to get on board with the message and the theme behind it. And I think we were always really um, sort of driven to tell that story and the theme of like be yourself no matter how different you are and people seem to really re it seems to really resonate with them um one of the things that is always um a, a huge relief and joy is to sit in an audience and people in like laugh and enjoy the things that you've been agonizing over and worrying that no one's gonna like <laughs> as you're making it that's by far the 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 nicest and you know, at points surprising where you think, oh, wow, people really like this moment, which we we kind of thought maybe isn't going to land. And um, and to hear a whole like audience sort of crack up at it, that's the, the best kind of surprise you can get. What about you, Mikey? I thought that was be beautifully put. Yeah, I mean, the... So uh, I think people's reaction to the kind of the poignancy of the material has been really nice to hear you know the way that people empathize with the the technique in which it's made that it's been just you know described differently by lots of people but um one thing that kind of rings true with me is that idea of a kind of uh an empathetic bond with the stop motion material and that people can kind of feel how it's made and in doing so connect with the characters and with a the sort of fragility of them because they because they are these fragile objects and so there's a kind of um resonance that that material and process has running alongside the narrative and the performance and the writing also that kind of emotional weight of the material that's been really nice to to hear back from people because i think that's something that me and dan have like felt <laughs> you know that's why we make stop motion is because like oh when you see it come to life when you see it move it's magic um but to know that that communicates in an audience is is really cool well that's wonderful well thank you both so much for making this film and for talking uh to me about it today and for those who haven't seen robin robin yet you can stream it on netflix hey awesome. Thanks so Thank much, you. guys. Best of luck in the Oscar race. Oh, thank thanks, Abe. Cheers, man. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank Take you. Care. Bye bye.